Against the backdrop of the Ukrainian Armed Forces offensive in the Kursk region, Russian propagandists have become bolder. They complain about the weakness of the Russian army and the protracted war. Thus, a fit of truth happened to a guest of the Russian propaganda talk show Meeting Place on the NTV channel. Frequent guest of Russian TV, political scientist Andrei Fedorov, who previously held the post of Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, called Russia's position in the war against Ukraine a disgrace. Ukrainian troops have been in the Kursk region for 21 days. I think it's a disgrace. I just remember that in 84 days, there will be 1,000 days of war. This is also a disgrace, he said. The presenter became very upset by Fedorov's frank statement and tried to devalue his words. You are counting how long our SVO has been going on. You are our full-time accountant. The propagandist said mockingly. Earlier reported that Russian Z war correspondent Romanov advised Russians not to expect the Ukrainian armed forces to leave the Kursk region soon. He is confident that Ukrainian forces have consolidated their positions there until the end of the war. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to use maneuvering tactics during their offensive in the Kursk region, which allows them to reliably hold territory without major losses, and the Russian army can do nothing about it. From what I saw on the ground, I came to the conclusion that we will not smoke out the enemy from the Kursk region by the end of the war. We simply will not smoke out. This mess in the Kursk region will remain with us until the end of the war. The enemy avoids direct clashes. In certain populated areas he resists, but mostly he avoids. And if they start to press him, he, bam, and jumps back into the forest. And in the forest, you will hardly find him. They, Ukrainian forces, are scattered. It is a very difficult undertaking to catch them there. And if you go deep with infantry, you can run into mines. There is resistance. You can lose a lot of forces, the propagandist said. Ukrainians are determined to never live in a closed authoritarian system again. To achieve victory, they are actually targeting Russian energy infrastructure inside the country. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication recalls that in late August, Russia sent a wave of drones to Ukraine attacking its energy infrastructure. Last night, Ukraine struck a power plant in Moscow with drones as well as oil depots and refineries. According to the author, Ukraine carried out these strikes to end the war and Putin's rule. Ukraine has options now because it was successful in the initial phase of this invasion, said Nico Lang, a senior fellow in the Transatlantic Defense Program at the Center for European Policy Analysis. According to media reports, Russia's oil and gas revenues amounted to $219 billion in 2020. Together, these two sectors account for 60% of Russia's exports and 40% of the federal budget. So how will this war end? Ukrainian President Zelensky believes his country must escalate to de-escalate, a tactic that includes seizing Russian land and seizing critical Russian energy assets. Putin, however, believes he can win a war of attrition. But at what cost? The longer it goes on, the poorer Russia becomes and the more toothless it looks. It could empower the people and topple the dictator. The publication concludes, According to analysts, attack on Russian energy facilities could have significant consequences for the Russians. According to the experts, from a strike by Ukrainian UAVs on Russian state district power plants and oil refineries in Moscow, it will literally burn. Recall on September the 1st, Ukraine hit a power plant in Moscow with drones. It is also striking oil depots and refineries. Ukrainian attacks on fuel storage facilities and electric substations are retaliatory, aiming to give Russians a taste of their own medicine. Russia's electricity network is already fragile and needs modern technologies to increase resiliency. These attacks, combined with the vulnerability of their electricity network, are expected to cause significant suffering for the Russian people this winter, possibly even more than the hardships experienced by the Ukrainian people. The most compelling question is whether the Russian dictatorship will survive. If Russia loses, dissatisfaction among the public and political elites could increase. Continued economic sanctions and military losses may further strain Russia, potentially creating an opportunity for political opposition or factions within the government to challenge Putin's leadership.